This video is about the tests of independence. The chi-square test of independence is used to associate two categorical variables in which its test statistic is computed using this equation. And as we can see, the test statistic in the chi-square test of independence is identical to the chi-square test of homogeneity. And similarly, the chi-square test of independence assumes that the expected count must at least be 5 in at least 20% of the number of cells in the cross tabulation. However, unlike in the chi-square test of homogeneity wherein one categorical variable is only limited to two possible distinct outcomes, let's say positive or negative, the chi-square test of independence may be applied even if both variables have more than two possible distinct outcomes. Now suppose let's have two variables, variable 1 and variable 2, in which both have three possible distinct outcomes. So we may summarize it using the 3 by 3 cross tabulation. And if all the observed counts are equal, let's say the observed counts are equal to 10, then the proportions are all equal. And we say that there is no association between the two variables. So we can say that variable 1 has no association with variable 2. Or in other words, variable 1 and variable 2 are independent. Or simply the proportions do not differ which supports the null hypothesis. However, if we have a cross-tabulation in which the observed counts are different, or in other words, the proportions differ, we can see an association between variable 1 and variable 2. As we can see, there is a correspondence in the responses of variable 1 and variable 2. Because as we can see here, the response in variable 2 depends on the response in variable 1. As we can see, if the response in variable 1 is A, the response in variable 2 is Y. If the response in variable 1 is B, the response in variable 2 is X. And if the response in variable 1 is C, the response in variable 2 is Z. And this is what we mean by the association existing between variables 1 and 2, which again implies that the response in variable 2 depends on the response in variable 1. Or in other words, the proportions differ which supports the alternative hypothesis. So keep in mind that the null hypothesis use no association, independent, or do not differ. And on the other hand, the alternative hypothesis use association, dependent, or differ. And be cautious because we are not using the word correlation because correlation is another tool in statistics. Now let's have the same example which we had during the statistical inference involving proportions which is about the Alzheimer's disease. It is reported that more women are diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease than men. To test this claim, 90 women and 80 men of at least 70 years of age were selected and results show that 23 and 9 have the disease respectively. Do this data provide sufficient evidence that the occurrence of Alzheimer's disease differ with men and women? Test at 5% level of significance. Remember that our null hypothesis here is that the proportions of men and women with Alzheimer's disease are equal. And the alternative hypothesis is that the proportions of men and women with Alzheimer's disease are not equal. And we use the z-test of two proportions in which z is equal to 2.38167 and with p-value of 0.017, we rejected the null hypothesis and concluded that there is sufficient evidence that the proportions of men and women with Alzheimer's disease are not equal. Now, since in the chi-square test of independence, we say that there is no association between the two variables under the null hypothesis and there is an association between the two variables under the alternative hypothesis, taking a look at this example, we may just rephrase the question that instead of asking if the occurrence of Alzheimer's disease differ among men and women, synonymously, this is asking if the occurrence of Alzheimer's disease is associated with gender. Thus, the null hypothesis may be modified as the occurrence of Alzheimer's disease is not associated with gender and the alternative hypothesis may be modified as the occurrence of Alzheimer's disease is associated with gender. And given this cross tabulation, we may compute the expected count, the chi-square test statistic, as well as the p-value. While in R, we may just open the file which is alzheimer.rdata and using the two essential columns, which are Alzheimer's 
and gender, which identifies whether the patient has Alzheimer's disease or not, and whether the patient is a man or woman respectively. And to generate the same cross tabulation, simply use the table function. So that is table, open parenthesis, Alzheimer, dollar sign Alzheimer, comma, Alzheimer, dollar sign gender to display the same 2 by 2 table. And eventually, we may make use of the chi-square.test function for us to perform the chi-square test of homogeneity or in this case, the chi-square test of independence. And as we can see, the p-value is 0 0.01723, which is exactly the same p-value as we applied the prop.test function or the z-test for two proportions. And with p-value that is less than 0 0.05, we rejected the null hypothesis and conclude that there is an association between the occurrence of Alzheimer's disease and gender. And since the p-values here of the chi-square.test and the prop.test or the z-test for two proportions are equal, then this shows that the chi-square test of independence with 2 by 2 table is equal to the chi-square test of homogeneity with 2 by 2 table and the z-test for two proportions. Or in other words, the z-test for two proportions is exactly the same as the chi-square test of independence with 2 by 2 table as well as the chi-square test of homogeneity with 2 by 2 table. Or in other words, the z-test for two proportions is equal to the chi-square test for 2 by 2 tables or when the degrees of freedom in the chi-square test is equal to 1. Now let's proceed to example number 2. It has been established that smoking is associated with lung cancer. A group of researchers wanted to verify if it is true. Results from the 300 randomly selected patients are in the cross population below. Test the hypothesis at 5% significance level that smoking is associated with lung cancer. Since we have here a 3x3 three three cross tabulation which is composed of the smoking status that identifies whether the patient is a current, an ex, or non-smoker and the lung cancer type which identifies whether the patient has non-small cell lung cancer, small cell lung cancer, or no lung cancer and since we're testing whether smoking is associated with lung cancer then our null hypothesis is that smoking is not associated with lung cancer and the alternative hypothesis is that smoking is associated with lung cancer. And since the smoking status and the lung cancer type are both categorical variables, then we're going to apply the chi-square test of independence. Now, to perform the chi-square test, we have to compute first of the expected counts, in which the expected count again is the column total times the row total divided by the overall total, which is exactly the same as the n times the pi or the p hat which we previously discussed. Now, computing for the expected count of 6, all we have to do is, is to get its column total, so that's 12, times the row total, which is 30, divided by the overall total, which is 300. And we're going to get 1.2. Next, let's compute for the expected count of 4. So its column total is 12. Row total is 150. Divided by overall total, which is 300. So we're going to get 6.0. For 2, that will be the column total, which is 12. Row total, which is 120 divided by the overall total, which is 300. And we're going to get 4.8. For 9, the column total is 17, times the row total, which is 30, divided by the overall total, which is 300. And we're going to get 1.7. And continuing with the other cells, we're going to have these expected counts. Now, the assumption of the chi-square test is that the expected count of at least 5 must be maintained in at least 20% of the number of cells. Or in other words, the expected counts that is less than 5 must not exceed 20% of the cells. However, in this table, we can see that there are 3 cells having expected count less than 5. 
which shows that 3 out of 9 cells, which is 33.3% of the cells, have expected count less than 5, which violates this assumption of the chi-square test. Meaning, if we're going to have this table, which is composed of 3 columns and 3 rows, or in other words, 9 cells, 20% of that is 1.8. So this shows that the number of cells with expected count less than 5 must not exceed 1.8 cells. Now, since we have 3 cells with expected count less than 5, so chi-square test may not be used. If situation occurs that the number of cells with expected count less than 5 is more than 20% of the total number of cells, first is you may disregard the rows or columns in which the observed counts mostly consist of 0. For example, if you have a cross tabulation in which one column mostly consists of 0, you may disregard that column and proceed with the chi-square test of independence. Or second, you have to collapse some rows or columns meaning you have to combine or merge some rows or columns with the same characteristics. And that will be demonstrated in the same example. We're going to combine some rows and columns with the same characteristics. Now, non-small cell and small cell lung cancer are both lung cancers. So in other words, we may combine this and we may just say that these are patients who are positive to lung cancer. Then regarding smoking, we may combine these two rows, current smoker and ex-smoker, because technically speaking, they are patients with lungs who are exposed to smoking already. So we may combine these two and declare it, let's say, simply as smokers versus non-smokers. So in that way, we may come up with a 2 by 2 table in which... The positive column refers to the merged columns of non-cell and small-cell lung cancer patients. And we may have a row for smoker which again composed of current and ex-smokers. Now combining these four cells which are positive to lung cancer and smokers, so we may just add the 6, 4, 9, and 4 and that gives us a sum of 23. So meaning there are 23 patients who are positive of lung cancer and at the same time who are smokers. Next, we may combine these two cells because these two cells are those who are positive to lung cancer and who never smoke. And 2 plus 4 gives us a sum of 6. We may also combine these cells, 15 and 142, so that gives us 157 patients who are smokers and who are negative of lung cancer. And lastly, we're going to have still 114 patients who are negative to lung cancer and who never smoke. So this gives us a total of 29 positive patients to lung cancer, that is the sum of 12 and 17, 271 as still the sum of this column, and then we're going to have 180 total smokers, this one, and 120 non-smokers, this one. So now that the columns and rows are merged with the same characteristics, May we use chi-square test already? Let's calculate the expected counts. For 23, the expected count will be the column total times the row total over the overall total which is 300. And that gives us an expected count of 17.4. Next, for this one, column total is 29, row total is 120. And the overall total is 300. So the expected count of that is 11.6. For 157, we're going to have the column total times the row total over the overall total, which is 300. And we're going to have an expected count of 162.6. And lastly, for 114, 
its column total is 271, its row total is 120, divided by the overall total, and that gives us an expected count of 108.4. Again, you may check if the expected counts total across each row, meaning 17.4 plus 162.6, that's 180. 11.6 plus 108.4, that is 120. And likewise, across each column, so the sum of this would still be 29, and the sum of this would still be 271. So given this expected counts, there's no expected count which is less than 5 anymore. So all the expected counts are already at least 5, so that doesn't violate the assumption of the chi-square test. So we may compute already for the chi-square test using observe minus expected square over expected in each cell. So, observe minus expected, so 23 minus 17.4 square over the expected, which is 17.4, plus, for this cell, we're going to have observe minus expected, so that is 6 minus 11.6 square over 11.6, plus, for this cell, we're going to have 157 minus 162.6, square over 162.6 and for this one we're going to have 114 minus 108.4 square over 108.4 and that gives us a sum of 4.988 with degrees of freedom of 1 so the number of rows is 2 minus 1 the number of columns is also 2 so minus 1 the product of that is 1. So we have a chi-square test statistic of 4.988 with degrees of freedom of 1. For the critical value, we're going to make use still of this table. With alpha 0 0.05 and degrees of freedom of 1, we're going to have 3.8415 as the critical value. We may verify that in R using Q chi-square 0.95 comma then the degrees of freedom, which is 1. And that gives us the same critical value, which is 3.8415. Now, this tells us that if we have the chi-square distribution, again, note that the chi-square distribution has a chi-square value of 0 on the leftmost side part because chi-square is always a non-negative value, so it can never be negative. Critical value is 3.8415. So this is the value of the chi-square in which this area is 0 0.05. So this region here or area is the area of rejection. Now 4.988 is, is it in the area of rejection? Yes, it's somewhere here. Let's say this is chi-square as 4.988. So since it's in the area of rejection, then we're going to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there is sufficient evidence that smoking is associated with lung cancer. Now, for the p-value, we may get the area of 4.988 to the right. So, this is the p-value. And we may compute that using p, chi-square, and then 4.988, and then comma, degrees of freedom, which is 1. And then again, we still have to subtract it from 1 since we are getting its area to the right. And we're going to have a p-value of 0 0.026, in which it's less than 0 0.05. That's why we rejected the null hypothesis. Now, let's open the file, smoke lung cancer, that are data. And we're going to see here two essential columns, which are smoking status and the type of cancer. So for the smoking, we're going to have current smoker, ex-smoker, and never. While for the type column, we can see negative, small cell, lung cancer, and non-small cell, lung cancer. We may generate the cross tabulation or the cross tab using the table function. And we're going to see this cross tab composed of three columns and three rows.
Now, if we're going to perform the chi-square test using the chi-square dot test function and name it as chi result and typing chi result, we're going to see a warning message from R. It's because some of the cells have expected count less than 5. So for us to see that, we may check chi result dollar sign observe and chi result dollar sign expected. And we can see that some of the cells have expected count less than 5. So 3 out of 9, again, that is 33.3% have expected count less than 5, which exceeds the assumption of the chi-square test in which the number of cells with expected count less than 5 must not exceed 20% of the total number of cells. So what we did was we merged some columns and labeled, let's say, this is positive and merged these rows and labeled it as smoker. So how are we going to do that in R? We're in small cell and non-small cell will be considered as positive and X and current smokers will be considered as smokers. So I came up with a code in R and that is in recoding smoke lung cancer, that text file. So as you open the file, you're going to see these codes. And this code tells us that R will create a new column which is smoking 2 in which if the smoking status is current and X, it will be recoded as 1. While if never, it will be recoded as 0. So meaning... From the smoking column, which is composed of current, let's say X, and never. What R will do is, it will create another column, which is smoking 2, which will now be composed of current and X, which are coded to 1, meaning they are smokers, and never, who will be coded with 0, indicating never smokers. And then on the second part, non-small cell and small cell will be coded as positive and others, or in other words, the negative, will be coded as negative. So we can see here that if in the type column, it's coded as small cell, it will be recoded as 1. Non-small cell will also be recoded as 1. And negative will be coded as 0. And it will now be under the new column, which is type 2. So in other words, if our data shows that the patient has small cell lung cancer or non-small cell lung cancer, it will be recoded as 1 in the type 2 column in which 1 means it's positive and if the result is negative, it will be coded as 0 which implies negative. So we can see here the new codes 0 and 1 will be negative and positive. While for smoker, 0 and 1 means non-smoker and smoker. Now all we have to do is to copy-paste that code and paste it in R. So once you paste it in R and press enter, you're going to see now two new columns which are smoking 2 and type 2. In which smoking 2 will be composed of two possible responses and type 2 will also have two possible responses only. Now we may create a cross tab using those two new columns using this code and we're now going to see the 2 by 2 table which we had a while ago. And performing chi-square test, we're going to have a p-value of 0 0.026, which is the same p-value that we got a while ago. Now, we may name this result as sky result to check the observe and the expected count, and we see that there's no expected count anymore that is less than 5. Now, if more than 20% of the total number of cells still have expected count less than 5, and what's left is a 2 by 2 table, in other words, the chi-square test assumption is violated because of the number of cells with expected count less than 5 and merging of rows and columns are not possible anymore. You may try the following. First is to increase the sample size, meaning gather more data. 
because this will ensure that the expected count will be increased. To demonstrate, for example, if we have this 2 by 2 table in which one cell have expected count less than 5, increasing the sample size will increase a row and a column. And surely, this will increase the expected count. However, in most cases, it is not possible to gather more data as it will require more amount of time. Thus, we may apply another suggestion, which is simply to apply a correction in the chi-square test of independence, which is called as the Yates Continuity Correction. And that is the one represented by 0.5 in this equation. And in R, we simply make use of the correct equals true option. And the last suggestion is to apply the Fisher's exact test, in which in R, that is Fisher.test function. Recall that in example number 2, our p-value is 0.026. Now let's try to apply the Fisher's exact test using R, that is Fisher.test function. So for example, we're going to make use of Fisher.test, open parenthesis, then any name, let's say 2 by 2, arrow, and then matrix, open parenthesis, C, open parenthesis, then 23, comma, 6, comma 157, comma 114, close parenthesis, 2, comma 2, close parenthesis. Note that the values 23, 6, 157, and 114 are the observed counts, while the 2, comma 2 are the number of rows and the number of columns in the cross tabulation. You may also verify whether you were able to enter the correct values by typing the same object name which is 2 by 2. And you may also use the feature that test parenthesis smoke lung cancer dollar sign smoking 2 comma smoke lung cancer dollar sign type 2 to generate the same result. And thus we can see the result of the Fisher's exact test is that the p-value is 0.028 which is very close to 0.026 which is the result of the chi-square test of independence. This shows that the chi-square test of independence was able to approximate well the p-value when there is no expected count less than 5 in the cross tabulation. Now let's have another example in which autism is associated with sex because it is reported that autism spectrum disordered are more common in males with ratio of one female for every four males diagnosed. So in this case, we want to establish whether sex or gender is associated with autism. Thus, our null hypothesis here is that gender is not associated with autism and the alternative hypothesis is that gender is associated with autism. Now, taking a look at the data, let's open autism.rdata and let's generate the cross tabulation using this function. So, this data shows that there are 20 males and 20 females in the data with with 36 who are negative and 4 who are positive of autism. Now, computing for the expected count of each cell, we're going to have an expected count of 18, 18, 2, and 2. Now, we may not use chi-square test here. It's simply because we have two cells with expected count less than 5. So, since this is a 2 by 2 table, Merging of rows or columns is not possible anymore. So we have to make use of the suggestion that we apply the chi-square test with Yates continuity correction. So all we have to do is to get the sum of O minus E absolute value minus 0.5 square over the E, which is expected count. So all we have to do is to apply this equation. So that is the sum of O minus E in each cell. So we have 19 minus 18. Absolute value minus 0.5 square over the expected count which is 18. Plus, in this cell, we have observed count which is 17. Expected count which is 18. Then minus 0.5 square over 18. And then, on this cell, we have Observe, which is 1, expected, which is 2, minus 0.5 square over expected, which is 2. Plus, observe, which is 3, minus expected, which is 2, minus 0.5 square over 2.
and getting the sum of that, we're going to have 0.277777 and so on, or 0.2778, with degrees of freedom as 1. Next, for the critical value, we may make use of the same table, so 0 0.05 and df of 1, we're going to have 3.8415. We may verify that in R using Q chi square 0.95 1. And we're going to have 3.84. In other words, if this is our chi square distribution, this chi square here, which is 3.8415, has an area here which is 0 0.05. And this is our area of rejection. Now, where is 0 0.2778? Is it in the area of rejection? No, let's say it's somewhere here. So, this is chi-square 0.2778. So, it's not in the area of rejection. Thus, we're not going to reject the null and conclude that there is no sufficient evidence that gender is associated with autism. Now, for the p-value, we may compute the area from 0.2778 to the right. So to do that, we may make use of P chi-square 0.2778 comma then the degrees of freedom which is 1. And then again, we still have to subtract it from 1 since we're getting the area to the right. And we're going to have a p-value of 0.598. So since the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, then we're not going to reject the null hypothesis. So suppose we run it in R using the chi-square test function and then without the continuity correction first. Okay, so what will happen? We're going to get a p-value of 0.2918. Note that there's a warning message here indicating that there's an expected count less than 5. Now, if we take a look using this code, we see here that there are two cells with expected count less than 5. So that makes this result, specifically this p-value, incorrect. So, we have to perform the chi-square test with Yates correction here by simply using true in this option. So using the chi-square dot test, so this time with correct equals true, meaning we're performing the Yates continuity correction here, we're going to have a p-value of 0.598. And this is the same chi-square test and p-value that we computed a while ago using the chi-square test with Yates continuity correction. Now let's compare it since the suggestion a while ago is that if there's a 2x2 two two table in which the expected count of less than 5 exceeds 20% of the cells, we may apply either the Yates correction or the Fisher's exact test. Now, let's try to apply the Fisher's exact test using Fisher.test. So, using Fisher.test, we're going to have a p-value of 0 0.605. Now, what you must notice here is that the p-value generated by the chi-square test when using the Yates continuity correction is close to the p-value using the Fisher's exact test. Comparing it with the chi-square test a while ago without the Yates continuity correction, notice that this p-value is far or not close to this p-value. This shows that chi-square test was not able to approximate the true p-value when the Yates continuity correction or when the correction is not applied. That is why we always have to consider the assumption of the chi-square test of having expected count of at least 5 in at least 20% of the cells because this will ensure us that the chi-square test approximation of the p-value will be very near to the exact p-value. So note that the chi-square test is just a way to approximate the exact p-value. And violating the assumption of the chi-square test will generate an approximated p-value which is not close enough 
to the exact p-value. Consider that although many claim that the Fisher's exact test should only be applied in data with small sample sizes, the truth is the Fisher's exact test is valid for any sample size. And while the chi-square tests rely on approximation, the Fisher's exact test is better since it is an exact test. You may read the details of this statistical note for clinical researchers as published by Kim in 2017 using the link in the description box below. Thus, if you have a cost tabulation or in other words, if you're associating two categorical variables, you may always use the Fisher's exact test without worrying of the expected counts less than 5 unlike in the chi-square tests. I hope you learned the tests of independence through this video. You may click like, you may also subscribe and hit the bell button for more videos soon. Thank you for watching and stay safe guys!